VLANs are very helpful when it comes to separating a network. But because we cannot delete VLAN 1, which is the default VLAN, we need to do a little editing. In this edition of Tech Talks, we'll show you how to change the default native VLAN on the Cisco CBS350 switch next. Let's begin by heading to the VLAN settings under VLAN management. Here, we can see our default or native VLAN, VLAN 1. For this example, we're going to create two new VLANs. We'll click on add to create a new VLAN. Our VLAN ID will be 10 and our name will be admin. The VLAN interface state and link status, SNMP traps, are enabled by default. We'll keep those as is. Next, we'll click apply to save. For our second VLAN, we'll give it an ID of 20 and a name of new native VLAN. We'll click apply to save. Before we can continue, it's important to point out that our administrative VLAN should be different than the native VLAN. Our administrative VLAN should carry management traffic, such as SSH. All right, next we'll head over to port to VLAN. We can see under VLAN ID that we are under VLAN 1 and that all ports are under VLAN 1 too. Under VLAN ID, we're going to choose one of the VLANs we created. For this example, it's VLAN 10. We'll click Go to move forward. Now we need to assign a port to the VLAN. In this example, since our end device is connected to the switch at port 3, we will leave this port assigned to VLAN 1 because we would lose connection to the switch. Also, since our switch is currently connected to our router at port 1, we'll leave port 1 on VLAN 1 for now. Let's add port 5 to VLAN 10. We'll switch the membership type to untagged and then hit apply to save. Next, we'll add a port to VLAN 20. We'll change the VLAN ID to 20 and hit go. Again, we'll leave port one and port three to VLAN one. We'll choose port two to add to VLAN 20. Since nothing is currently connected to port two, we'll switch its type to untagged and then click apply to save once again. Next, we're going to move to IPv4 interface under the IPv4 Configurations tab. Here we can see our default VLAN 1 IPv4 interface, but we'll need to create new IPv4 interfaces for our new VLANs. We'll click on Add to get started. First, we'll change the VLAN to 10. Here we can choose the dynamic IP address, and the IPv4 address will be assigned from DHCP. However, it may be more beneficial to assign a static IP address so that it will be consistent and not change. For this example, we'll enter in our IP address, which is 10.15.10.10, and a network mask of 255.255.255.0. We'll click Apply to save. Next, we're going to add an IPv4 interface for VLAN 20, which will be our new native VLAN. Again, we'll switch to VLAN 20, select static IP address, and enter in our information. We'll click Apply to save. Once we've created our new IPv4 interface for our new VLANs, we can delete the VLAN 1 IPv4 interface. It's important to do this only after we've created our new IPv4 interfaces. If we were to delete it before creating the new ones, we would be locked out and would have to factory reset the switch. To delete VLAN 1, we'll go ahead and select it and click on the delete icon. Once we've deleted VLAN 1, we see that we are no longer connected to the switch. That's because we have deleted the interface to which we were connected. We can still access the switch since we've created new IPv4 interfaces for our new VLANs. However, we'll need to change the IPv4 address on the end user to the subnet of the new IPv4 interface that we just created. In this example, we're using a PC on Windows 10, so we can change the computer's IPv4 address by going to Settings. We'll click on Network and Internet and Change Adapter Options. Here, we can right-click on Ethernet and choose Properties. We should see Internet Protocol version 4. We'll double-click it and make sure Use the following IP address is chosen. Then enter in our IP address. Since we have an interface at 10.15.10.10, we must make sure that our PC IP address will also be within that subnet. 
Here, we changed our IP address to 10.15.10.5, which is in the same subnet as our IPv4 interface that we created. We can now go ahead and click OK twice and then close out of that window. Next, we can double check that our configuration was changed by checking in the command prompt. Under the command prompt, we'll go ahead and enter ipconfig and enter it. Here, we can see that our IP address did change to 10.15.10.5. If not, we'll need to go back and change the IP address. Make sure that we remember that we are currently connected on port three on the switch, which is still on VLAN one. We'll need to change the port to which our PC is connected. It will need to be on a port that is in VLAN 10, since that is the IPv4 interface to which we'll try to connect. Earlier, we added port five to VLAN 10, so we will now connect the PC to port five on that switch. We'll open a new browser and enter the IPv4 address of our IPv4 interface that we created. It's 10.15.10.10. We see here that the switch's GUI has popped up. We'll log back into the switch. Once we're inside, we're going to click on VLAN management and select port to VLAN. Under the VLAN ID, we see that we are under VLAN one. If we scroll down, we can see that we still have a lot of ports that are assigned to VLAN one. We need to assign these ports to VLAN 20 because it is the new native VLAN. Before we do that, let's go ahead and click on the VLAN ID, change it to 10 and click go. Here we can see that port five is currently in VLAN 10. We need to remember that so we don't change that port in the future. We'll leave that port as is. Now, let's switch to VLAN 20, click Go. We can now go ahead and assign all the ports that were on VLAN 1 to VLAN 20. We'll exclude VLAN 10 though, which was port 5, and untag the rest of the ports. Once we're done assigning the rest of the ports to VLAN 20, we'll click Apply. Now we'll move on to port VLAN membership. Here we see that all the ports are in VLAN 20, with the exception of port 5. The next thing we'll have to do is change the native VLAN on all ports to the new native VLAN. If we select our port and click Join VLAN, we can edit the native VLAN ID under Trunk Mode Membership. Currently, this is set at VLAN 1. We need to change that to 20. We'll click Apply. Ideally, we want all ports to have the same native VLAN, so we'll have to change all the ports. Once we've changed all ports, we'll have successfully changed the default or native VLAN on the switch. Thanks for watching Tech Talks from Cisco. We'll see you next time.